Hello there everybody and welcome back to another EDH gameplay video brought to you by Affinity 4 Commander. My name is Martin and today we have a battle for you between a Wheeling Wizard, a Corrupt Elemental, a Master Mage and a Warrior from the Deserts of Dominaria. But before we begin, I'd like to personally thank all of our absolutely incredible patrons listed on screen for their heartwarming generosity. We wouldn't be able to continue making videos such as these without your support, so thank you. Also, if you decide to make a purchase from any of these websites, then be sure to do so via our affiliate links in the video description. It won't cost you anything extra, but it really helps out the channel. And if you haven't already, then go and check out altersleeves.com, where you can find thousands of super cool designs on perfect fit sleeves to really blend out your decks. Just be sure to quote us as the ones who sent you. But that's enough of that, let's take a look at those opening hands. I am playing my Hazazon Tamar deck, where it aims to get as many lands out onto the battlefield as possible before casting my commander. This will result in me creating a bunch of creatures of Hazazon's ability, which I plan on buffing with various anthem effects. I also run multiple ways of sacrificing my commander, so that he isn't around when his delay trigger resolves, making the sand warriors he produces immune to his leaves the battlefield effect. I keep an opening hand of Yavimir Elder, Solemn Simulacrum, Panharmonicon, Scattered Groves and Three Forests. Thomas is playing as Naban Dean of Iteration deck, which runs a fair number of wizards to make the most of his commander's ability. He is also running a mill sub theme, with the intention being to double all his ETB mill triggers with Naban's ability. And of course, like most blue decks, Thomas is running a healthy control package to protect his board and slow down his opponents. Thomas starts the game with a hand of Essence Flux, Steel Enchantment, Disallow, Deep Analysis, Remote Isle, and Two Islands. Tom is playing his Nekasaw the Mind Razor deck, which, surprise surprise, is all about card draw. He also runs as many wheel effects as he can fit into the deck, forcing everybody to draw way more cards than we really should be, and triggering his commander's ability as many times as possible. In addition to this, Tom runs a fair amount of control cards, something that makes his deck stand out a bit from the typical builds. Tom's starting hand consists of Brainstorm, Nightscape Familiar, Fell Spectre, Wheel and Deal, Kolvaf's Fury, Reliquy Tower, and Dismal Backwater. And finally, Hugo is playing as Yarrick the Desecrated Double Triggers deck, which, unlike Thomas's deck, doesn't need any creature type restrictions to work. No, Hugo plans on maximizing the value out of as many ETB effects as he can, be they on creatures, lands, or anything else. He even runs a respectable landfall package as well, which goes hand in hand with his ramp cards. Hugo begins the game with a hand containing Kodama's Reach, Leyline of Anticipation, Shared Summons, Marsh Flats, Scalding Tarn, Field of the Dead, and a Forest. Tom wins the die roll, but before he begins, Hugo pops the Leyline of Anticipation from his opening hand onto the battlefield. Tom then plays Dismal Backwater, gaining a life, and passes to Hugo. Hugo plays Field of the Dead and passes. Thomas plays Remote Isle and ends his turn. I play Scattered Groves and pass to Tom. Tom plays Choked Estuary, choosing for it to enter tapped and passes. Hugo plays Marsh Flats, immediately sacrificing it and paying one life to put Overgrown Tomb into play tapped. With nothing more to do, he ends his turn. Thomas plays an island and casts Steel Enchantment. He enchants Leyla of Anticipation, gaining control of it, and passes to Martin. I play a forest and pass the turn. Tom responds to this by casting Brainstorm, drawing three cards and putting two cards on top of his library. With no further interruptions, he moves to his turn. Tom begins his turn by casting Nightscape Familiar and then plays Blood Crypt, having the Shockland enter tapped. Happy with his plays, he ends his turn. Hugo plays a forest and casts Kadama's Reach. He puts an island into his hand, a swamp onto the battlefield, and passes to Thomas. Thomas plays an island and passes. I play a plains and cast Yavimaya Elder. Out of mana, I end my turn. Tom plays Drowned Catacombs, 
and then casts Fell Spectre. He targets Hugo with the creature's ETB, having him discard a card and lose two life before passing the turn to him. Hugo plays an island and casts his commander, Yarrick the Desecrated. Thomas responds to this by casting Disallow, countering the elemental, and Hugo passes the turn. Thomas plays an island and ends his turn. I play a forest and then cast Solemn Simulacrum. I search my library for a mountain, put it into play tapped, and move to combat. Here I attack Hugo with my elder, dealing him 2 damage, and pass to Tom. Tom plays Reflecting Pool and passes the turn. Hugo plays Command Tower and ends his turn. Thomas responds to this by casting Deep Analysis, to which Hugo responds by casting Twin Summons whilst Thomas is out of mana. Smart. He searches his library for Tireless Tracker and Risen Reef, Thomas draws two cards, and Tom casts Wheel and Deal, forcing the rest of us to discard our hands and draw seven new cards. Fell Spectre triggers a bunch of times, dealing 12 damage to Hugo, 12 damage to Thomas, and 10 damage to me. Tom then draws a card, and Thomas proceeds to his turn. Thomas plays an island, and passes to Martin. Giving the blue player's creatures flash makes for some very dull turns. Agreed. I play Exotic Orchard and cast Farhaven Elf. I search my library for a mountain, put the land into play tat, and cast Cultivate. I put a plains onto the battlefield, a forest into my hand, and then move to combat. Here I attack Thomas with Solemn Simulacrum and my Elder, dealing him 4 damage and pass the turn. Tom responds to this by cycling Fetid Pools, and then moves to his turn. Tom plays an island and casts Mindstone. Next he casts his commander. Nekasar the Mind Razor, which Thomas decides not to counter, and Tom ends his turn. Hugo draws two, taking two damage, and then casts Cultivate. He searches his library for a snow swamp and a forest, putting the former into play and the latter into his hand. Field of the Dead triggers, given that Hugo now controls seven lands with different names, creating him a 2 2 zombie token. Not yet finished, Hugo casts Elvish Mystic, followed by Farseek. He once again searches his deck, this time putting Zagoth Trio onto the battlefield, which creates him a second zombie. Still not finished, Hugo plays Temple of Silence, scrying one. He keeps the top card of his library where it is, creates another zombie, and passes to Thomas. Thomas responds to this by flashing an altar of the brood, and then flashes in his commander, Naban, Dean of Iteration. This triggers the altar twice thanks to Naban's ability, forcing the rest of us to mill two cards. Still in Hugo's end step, Thomas casts Snap, returning Nekasar to Tom's hand and untapping two of his islands. He then pays three life to flash back Deep Analysis, drawing two cards, and finally proceeds to his turn. Thomas draws, discards down to seven, and ends his turn. Riveting stuff. I play a forest and cast my commander, Hazazan Tamar. Thomas responds to this by casting Spell Swindle, countering the warrior, and creating seven treasure tokens in the process. Ow, that's gonna hurt. Indeed it does. Tom, Hugo and I each mill 7 cards when the treasures enter the battlefield, and I then cast the Korra Tribe Elder. Moving to combat, I seek revenge on Thomas, attacking him with my robot and my old man. He takes the 4 damage, and I pass to Tom. Tom plays Lava Glide Pathway and recasts his commander. Thomas responds to this by sacrificing 4 treasures to cast Archmage Emiratus, milling the rest of the table for 2, and then cast Wizard's Retort. Thomas draws a card with Emiratus' ability, Nekasar is countered, and Tom uses his remaining mana to cast Korvath's Fury. He misreads the card, thinking that it targets just his opponents, and chooses for the rest of the table to discard their hands and draw that many plus one. This causes Fell Spectre to trigger multiple times once again, with Hugo discarding 6, and both Thomas and Martin discarding 5. Hugo takes 12 damage and draws 7 cards, and both Thomas and Martin take 10 and draw 6. Pleased with his position in the game, Tom passes the turn. Hugo begins his turn by casting Wild Pear, and then taps out to cast Forhaven Elf. He searches his library for a forest, putting the land into play tapped, and then puts Fierce Empath into play with Wild Pair's trigger. Hugo once again searches his library, this time putting Noxious Gearhulk into his hand, and in all the commotion, misses his Field of the Dead trigger. Silly Hugo. 
He then plays Exotic Orchard, remembering to make a zombie this time, and ends his turn. Thomas draws, plays an island, and passes to Martin. Land and pass, how original. I play Command Beacon and once again attempt to cast my commander. By some miracle, Thomas doesn't counter him this time, and I rejoice before moving to combat. Here I attack Thomas with the usual two suspects, and he responds by flashing in Sage's Road Denizen. Everyone other than Thomas mills two cards, and Thomas blocks the sad robot with his Vidalcan. Thomas takes two from the unblocked druid, Solemn Simulacrum is destroyed, and I draw a card from his death trigger. With nothing more to do, I pass the turn. Tom starts his turn by casting Megrim, causing the rest of the table to shift in their seats uncomfortably. Next, he casts Molten Psyche, forcing everybody to shuffle their hands into their libraries and draw that many new cards. This doesn't deal anybody any damage though, as nobody discarded anything, but does give Tom several new cards to play with. Tom takes full advantage of his new hand by playing Command Tower, which he then uses to help cast Spiteful Visions. Not wanting to die in his draw step, Thomas uses the last of his treasures and taps out to cast Rewind. He draws a card thanks to his Archmage, untaps four lands, and Tom moves to combat. Here he attacks Thomas with Fell Spectre, and Thomas takes the one damage. Pleased with his actions, Tom ends his turn. In his turn, Hugo recasts his commander, and then plays Temple of the False God. Field of the Dead triggers twice thanks to Yarrick, and Hugo creates two zombies as a result. Value. Next, he casts Thassa Deep Dwelling, which, sadly for him, doesn't trigger Wild Pair, as she doesn't enter the battlefield as a creature. Such a terrible shame. Not yet finished, Hugo taps out to cast Wood Elves, getting two triggers from the Elves ETB and Wild Pair. He searches his library for Elvish Rejuvenator and Boreal Druid, putting both Elves onto the battlefield, and then fails to find any forest to put into play of his Wood Elves. Another crying shame. Hugo then resolves his two Rejuvenator's ETBs, putting Tenomorphic Expanse and Bajuka Bog into play this way. He exiles Tom's and my graveyards with the Bog's triggers, creates four zombies, and moves to his end step. Thomas responds by flashing in Talran Sky Summoner, having Tom, Hugo and I mill two cards from Altar of the Brood, and Tom mills four more cards thanks to his Denizen. Hugo then flickers his empath with Thassa's ability, searching his library for the noxious Gearhulk that got shuffled back into his library with Molten Psyche, as well as Sire of Stagnation. He puts both creatures into his hand, and passes to Thomas. Thomas draws, plays an island, and passes. Nothing new there then. In my upkeep, Hazazon's delayed trigger resolves, creating me 10 1-1 Sand Warrior tokens. Next I play Nea Panorama, and then cast Beastmaster's Ascension. Not yet finished, I cast Wood Elves, putting Temple Garden into play tapped with their ETB, and then cast Birds of Paradise. Moving to combat, I attack Tom with all of my creatures that are able to, and he declares no blocks, taking 6 damage. I put 4 quest counters on my Ascension, and with nothing more to do, end my turn. Tom starts his turn by sacrificing his Mindstone to draw a card, and then casts Obnixilus the Hate Twisted. Thomas responds by casting Arcane Denial, countering the Planeswalker, and drawing a card with Archmage Amaratus. He then creates a 2-2 Drake token with flying thanks to Talrand, milling Hugo and Martin for 1, and Tom for 3. Not particularly pleased by this, Tom plays a Swamp, and passes to Hugo. In Hugo's upkeep, Tom draws two cards, and Thomas draws one card as a result of Arcane Denial. Next, Hugo plays an island, adding two zombies to his army, and then casts Noxious Gear Hulk. He destroys Fell Spectre and the Nightscape Familiar with the Construct's ETBs, to which Tom responds by regenerating the Familiar with his own ability. The Spectre is destroyed, gaining Hugo three life, and Hugo fails to find a creature to put into play from his library with Wild Pair. Yet another terrible occurrence. Not yet finished, Hugo casts Rampaging Bailoffs, once again failing to find a creature with Wild Pair. He then moves to combat, attacking Thomas with 10 of his zombies, and Thomas responds by casting Fumble, returning an attacking zombie to Hugo's hand, drawing a card, and creating another Drake. Hugo and I both mill 1, Tom mills 3, and Thomas casts Displace. He draws a card, makes a Drake, and flickers Archmage, Emeratus, and Talrond with the instant. 
This triggers Alter of the Brood and Sage's Rogue Denizen twice each, milling Hugo and myself for 4 and Tom for 12 thanks to Nabon's trigger doubling effects. Even after all of his efforts, Thomas realises that he is only able to block 7 of the creatures coming his way, which would result in him taking lethal damage from unblocked zombies. He therefore decides not to block taking the full 18 and returns Hugo's ley line of anticipation to him once he's been eliminated. In his second main phase, Hugo forgets that he's already played a land this turn and plays a forest. This creates him two more zombies as well as two 4-4 beasts and Hugo moves to his end step. Here he flickers Noxious Gear Hulk with Thassa's ability and with the robot's ETB on the stack I respond by casting Naya Charm, tapping all of the creatures that Hugo controls. Hugo then destroys his Azon and one of his beasts with the Gear Hulk's ETB, gaining 8 life and exiling all of my Sand Warriors. More than a little annoyed by this, I sacrifice my command beacon to put my commander into my hand, and then move to my turn. Martin plays Temple of the False God and recasts his Azon Tamar. Next, he casts Cathar's Crusade, and with nothing to do, ends his turn. Tom begins his turn by casting Dig Through Time, putting two of the top 7 cards of his library into his hand. Next he casts Underworld Breach, giving him access to all of the spells that Thomas made him mill, and casts the Blasphemous Act from among them. I respond to this by sacrificing my Sakura Tribe Elder, searching my library for a forest, and putting it into play tapped. Not yet finished, I also sacrifice my Yavimai Elder, drawing a card and putting two basic lands from my library into my hand. Tom's spell then resolves, dealing 13 damage to each creature, completely wiping the board. Not yet finished, Tom casts the Windfall in his graveyard, and Hugo responds to this by casting Circuitous Root. He searches his library, fails to find any basic lands, and Tom's spell then resolves. Everybody discards their hands, drawing two new cards, and both Hugo and I take 4 damage from Megrim. Pleased of his position in the game, Tom passes to Hugo. In his turn, Hugo casts Zendikar Resurgent, and uses newly doubled mana to recast his commander. Next, he casts Avenger of Zendikar, creating 30 one plant tokens with the elemental's doubled ETB trigger. Man, that's a lot of trees. Indeed. Hugo draws from his Resurgence trigger, fails to find a creature from his larder with Wild Pear, and plays Sunken Hollow. This triggers his Avenger twice, putting in two plus one plus one counters on each of his plant tokens. And with nothing more to do, Hugo moves to his end step. Here he flickers his Avenger with Thassa's ability, creating 30 more plants, and passes the turn. In my upkeep, Hazazon's delayed trigger resolves, creating me 15 one one Sand Warrior tokens. Thor's Crusade triggers 15 times, putting 15 plus one plus one counters on each of my tokens, and I then cast Divine Visitation. Imagine if you'd have that out before Hazazon's ability resolved. Ugh, if only. Not yet finished, I cast Perilous Forays, and unable to cast any more cards before Tom makes me discard them, I end my turn. Tom starts his turn by casting Deadly Tempest, to which Martin responds by sacrificing six of his creatures to Perilous Forays. He puts four basic lands into play tapped in this way, and the incredibly painful board wipe then resolves. Hugo loses 62 life, which unsurprisingly knocks him out of the game, and Martin loses 9. With two of his opponents now gone, Tom plays Bloodstained Mire and passes to Martin. I play Reliquary Tower and then tap an ungodly amount of mana to recast my commander once again. Tom immediately counters the warrior with Disdainful Stroke and then pays 1 life to sacrifice his fetch land. He puts Watery Grave into play tapped, and I then cast Kadama's Reach, failing to find any basic lands in my library. Deeply saddened by the way this game is headed, I pass the turn. Tom recasts Nekasar, plays a mountain, and ends his turn. Ooh, how ominous. In my turn, I draw two, taking two damage from Nekasar. I then recast his Azon for what feels like the billionth time, putting a plus one plus one counter on him with Cathar's Crusade. Not yet finished, I cast Champion of Landhold, putting a plus one plus one counter on both of my creatures, and pass to Tom. Tom draws two cards, plays Lightning Greaves, and then equips them to his undead wizard. With nothing more to do, he passes the turn. 
In my upkeep, I create 20 4 4 angels with flying and vigilance thanks to his Azon and Divine Visitation's combined abilities, putting 20 plus 1 plus 1 counters on each of my creatures with Cathar Crusade. Sweet Urza. Move into combat, I attack Tom with my 24 power Hazazon and my 21 power champion, neither of which he can block, winning me the game. Well, that is it for another game. I hope that you enjoyed seeing a commander that was printed before I was born, showing that power creep really isn't an issue in Magic the Gathering. Well, at least as far as commander is concerned. Don't forget that you can help to support the channel in four quick and easy ways, liking this video, hitting the bell icon, subscribing, and leaving us a comment, I read every one. And if you really like us, then consider checking out our Patreon page, where you can find exclusive rewards such as custom tokens and playmats for as little as a dollar a month. That's all for now though, we'll see you next time. Stay awesome!